Hey guys, Christy Rice here. I am the author of Painterly Days, the world's first watercoloring books for adults. And today I'm going to be painting in the flower version of the books. There are two others, Woodland and Pattern. I want to show you my palette. There's been a lot of talk about this palette. Uh, this shell is from Kramer Pigments in New York City. I will provide that source for you. You can fill it however you'd like by inserting little half pans and filling them yourself. I use four different brands currently. I use Kramer Pure Pigments that I mix myself, M. Graham, Windsor & Newton Professional Series, and of course Daniel Smith. I'm going to show you my brushes here. This is a dagger brush. It's a Royal and Langnickel um, Mini Majestic Dagger. And as you see, it has an angled edge that can paint very wide strokes and then a pointed edge that can paint very thin strokes. I'll be using two different sizes, one quarter inch and a one eighth inch. The one quarter I just showed on the screen there. So I want to get started. This is a real time demo, which I'm excited about. It's the first longer length full time, uh, real time demo, excuse me, that I've done. Of course, I have two brushes. Those, these are the only brushes I'm going to use. And I'll be honest, you only really need one of them, which would be the eighth inch um, dagger um, to really create a lot of different strokes. So I'm going to start out with a technique that I love because as you may know, I am all about painting in a way that makes you happy. I am not about what's right or what is the rule when it comes to painting. I'm about what makes you feel good. So I'm going to start by adding just some clean water to the page. And now I'm going to be adding some pigment. I'm running out of my favorite, which is Opera Pink from Daniel Smith. I'll have to get some more in there. And I am laying wet color from my brush onto a wet page. This is called wet in wet. Very simple technique. Um, definitely takes a little practice to kind of get your, uh, your sea legs, so to speak, under you with this technique, but it's so useful. It's the foundation of everything else you'll do in watercolor. And I'm going to continue on after I add some more color in my palette here, guys, I cannot say enough about opera rose and opera pink. Um, the only difference is the manufacturer. They are wonderful. I have yet to, to notice a huge difference in intensity. Um, so I cannot recommend them enough. If you're going to buy one expensive tube of paint, let this be the one. Um, so I'm going to continue here adding wet pigment into my wet areas on the paper. If you see my hand disappear off the screen, that means I'm cleaning my brush and getting clean water there to start adding back into the already wet page to smooth things out even further. I'm going along with an already wet brush and adding more moisture to the page. The water's not perfectly clean, that's okay. And what I will do is just continue on adding pigment here. I'm gonna add a little around the perimeter of the flower center. Very intense there, but I'm going to clean my brush, load up with some water, and just lay down that wet brush very softly next to that pigment I just put down. And that will soften that edge and let the color bleed out into the petal. One point of advice that I have that I haven't talked a lot about in my other demos and tutorials on YouTube is the amount of pressure that you need to put on your brush. Guys, I cannot stress enough you don't need to put a lot of pressure on your brushes. I think we get nervous. I know I do. Sometimes I'll be painting and I'll be like, oh my gosh, I am gripping this brush like there's no tomorrow. And I think we do that. It's just instinctual. But let me tell you this. These books are designed for the way that I love to paint. I love to paint with a lot of water and I love to paint with a lot of pigment. And I adore painting in a way where my hand just glides over the paper. I do not use a lot of pressure when I'm painting. So keep that in mind and we'll come back to that as we go through um, the demo here. So I'm using another technique on a dry part of the page. I'm loading up my brush. This is what I call a juicy brush, guys. I am definitely one who likes to make up names. This is a juicy brush. And I am getting about half water, half pigment, real nice and wet and full of color. And I'm laying that down onto the dry area of the page. 
and that gives you a slightly more intense look. Um, it allows the color, it doesn't spread as much, um, but it's just another great technique to have in your arsenal. I've added a little pink in the center and a little green in the center. Now, I am going to wait for all the areas that I've already painted to dry a bit. And while I do that, I'm going to work on some leaves that are around the flower. Remember guys, this is a real time demo. So I am working on just this one central bloom and the leaves surrounding it. So I am using, um, a sap green here, guys. I'm also, when it comes to beginner watercolor and watercoloring for the sake of finding joy, you guys know about my mission, art for joy's sake, you can find information about that um, in the description below. I am not all about color mixing. And I do wanna stop here just to show you how I'm using the very tip of this brush to get a nice point towards the top of my leaf. I'm barely pressing down when I start and then I'm starting to press down as I reach the middle of the leaf. And it's all about using the tip of that brush to get a fine point. Anyway, um, I am not too much about mixing color on the palette. You'll notice my palette does have some colors mixed, but I'm not too much about going crazy with color mixing. What I am a little emphatic about is practice. And here I'm gonna show you a little bit about practicing and understanding what your brush can do. Look at those wide strokes I just got from that 1 8 inch dagger. Almost a half inch thick stroke. Now look at the thin marks I'm able to make with the same exact brush. The first thick strokes were using the side of the brush and putting a little bit more pressure. This right now is a technique where I'm barely putting any pressure and I'm just gracefully touching the page with my brush to get a very thin, thin line. So guys, I recommend definitely practicing like this a little bit before you start in your book. It'll loosen you up and really get things going. Okay, let's get back into this working in the leaves. I'm just spreading down some color here, guys, onto the dry page, wet color onto the dry page. We talked about that a little bit. If you missed it, you can rewind and watch again. Um, sap green here, you can get sap green from a number of sources and I'm mixing it with a little bit of the dirty color on my palette, um, which is just collected color over time that gives you a little bit of a darkness to whatever you're mixing it with. I happen to have a peony from my garden here. So even though this is not the style of peony in my book, I pulled it out because I have to tell you friends, I really like to have something alive in front of me when I'm painting, if I can. And I, it's not always that I can have some alive bloom in front of me, but gosh, when I do, I love to take advantage of it just for inspiration. I mean, who doesn't get inspired by having fresh flowers around them? So what I love about this fresh bloom that I just picked this morning from my cutting garden are the um, kind of wine colored striations in the petals. I'm gonna zoom in here so you can see and I'm going to use that inspiration to inspire a little bit of color and a little bit of line work in my own painting here today. So what I've done is I've taken Alizarin Crimson, guys, Alizarin Crimson available in a lot of different brands. It is just a rich burgundy wine color. I am loading up my brush, setting some color down, coming back with water and using my brush to move around the water and the pigment. I am looking to get the outer edge of my petals as dark as they can be, but I wanna fade that out as I go towards the center of the petal. So I'm doing that with a wet brush, and this is what I call scooping up color. Some people call it scrubbing, some people call it flooding. I'm scooping up the excess water and color with a dry clean brush. And I'm gonna continue that as I go around here. I'm adding some dark areas here, going back, cleaning off my brush, smoothing out. Remember, I'm barely touching the page, adding some water here. See how that just smooths out that really intense line of color in alizarin crimson that I laid down just before. Again here, intense alizarin crimson. That petal's still wet, so you see how that's really exploding? And that's okay. Intense alizarin crimson. I'm laying that down. I'm realizing it's too wet. I'm going to go in this area with a clean, dry brush and I'm going to scoop out that excess color that bled into my other petal. Don't scrub too hard. You don't need to. Just a little bit of pressure. Don't do the back and forth. Back and forth is scrubbing. We don't like scrubbing. 
I don't like scrubbing, but you can do what you want. But I, I recommend not scrubbing too hard. Anyway, um, so I'm just gonna continue around here, guys, with the alizarin crimson. That petal is dry. So I actually need to add a little water on top, which is something you absolutely can do. This is a very simple version of glazing. Glazing is where an area is dry, but already has color on it, but it's dry. You then lay down more water and more pigment and build on top of what you've already done. So now that I've laid down that extra water, I'm going in with the same technique, put down the darker alizarin crimson on the edge, take some clean water and smooth the dark area together and blend. I'm lifting up excess color. Look at that. Look how pretty. Now that is something, guys, you're not going to get exactly how you want it the first time. You're going to need to practice that. You can certainly practice this particular technique again. Dark alizarin crimson around the edge. Clean water right up next to it. You can see the shine of that water really nicely there. And that starts blending everything together. More clean water right up against the edge of that alizarin crimson. Look how that blends. Gosh, I love that. It's such a simple technique, but once you get it, you can use it in so many different ways. So I'm just working my way around here. Guys, I'm a big proponent of painting, like I said earlier, painting in a way that makes you happy. I don't really care too much about the rules and I don't really care too much about being right. So right now, what's gonna make me happy is going and working on that fluffy, amazing center to this peony. So I'm gonna start working on that by adding in some stronger, um, kind of a mustard yellow, let's call it, guys. So mix whatever yellow you have on your palette, mix that with a little bit of dirty color from your palette, which is a little bit of whatever has collected in the corners, and you're gonna get a, a kind of a just a, a, a muddy yellow, so to speak. Okay, I guess that was enough of that for me. See, guys, I'm a little sporadic, but I go with what I feel and what makes me happy. So I noticed something about this upper petal and I wanted to start defining it. So I went back in with my alizarin crimson here and see how I'm just kind of notching in to create the impression that these petals are kind of thinner as they go into the center because that creates depth. So I'm notching in right there. See how I'm doing that? I'm just creating little notches to really create the feeling that the center is down in and the petals are coming up and surrounding the center of this peony. So I am excited about how this is looking. So I wanna continue it. So I'm going to continue it. So I'm just gonna look at the whole flower and move around and notch out little areas to continue to create that depth. Again, I am barely touching the page. I'm still using my 1 8 inch dagger brush, guys, but I'm using the pointed side. I'm not using the broad side. Just going around. I have a lot of pigment on my brush here. A lot of pigment. And look at that. Look at that little spot I just created. And it just tells you so much. That little bit of area there filled with alizarin crimson tells you so much. And I've created definition on that petal. You may want to pause here and really look at the shape I created. Um, again, that'll take a little bit of practice, but I think you'll be really pleased with going in at this stage and creating some definition. I find when I'm just going layer by soft layer by soft layer and just building soft, soft, soft layers, I get a little bored. I like to see some definition early on in my paintings. That is definitely against the rules of painting, but I do it anyway because it makes me happy. So I want the flower to dry a little bit more. So I'm going up into the leaves. Again, just using a nice grassy sap type green. Um, I keep using the color names, but guys, just use a green on your palette. Use a green that you like and that you wanna scoop up on your brush, no big deal. And remember, when you see me go off screen, I may be mixing a little, and I'm also probably cleaning my brush and drying my brush. We have a little bit of a blue green here. Notice how I'm leaving a little white for definition. You do not have to fill in the entire area that I have drawn out for you in these books. You can most certainly 
leave a little bit of white area. That gives you just a little bit of highlight and it starts to give you a sense of realism. Now, I already laid down that green color, but I wanted some more oomph to it. So I laid down a little yellow on top of it while the green was still wet. Carried that green on right down into the leaf below it. I'm putting, a, or excuse me, that yellow. I'm putting a little bit more of that yellow on this darker leaf up here, the blue green leaf that I started with. And I'm just continuing here with the leaves. You can see here, there is a lot of color on my brush, a lot of water on my brush here. I love it. I don't mind it. I'm going to let that go and let it dry. Moving down around the flower. Again, just a simple fill. There is nothing quite as satisfying as understanding the way your brush works. Your simple $5 dagger brush. Yes, that's right. They're $5. It's crazy. Don't worry. I'll put the sources below. Your simple $5 brush, knowing how it works and just filling in areas with watercolor can be so cathartic and relaxing. So if you're feeling overwhelmed right now, just fill in some leaves. Don't worry about following me exactly. Go in and fill in some of your leaves. Pause the video, fill in some leaves. Make yourself happy, make yourself feel good. It's okay. You can always come back and study the petals a little bit more. Mixing some more color now. I'm gonna use the broad side. I've got a little bit of a, kind of like a teal color, I would call it right now. It's got a lot of blue in it. And I'm just painting in that leaf that you see in the upper left there. The reason I chose to change my color a little bit, guys, was just to get a little bit of interest. I don't want to use the same, same green all throughout the entire painting. That would be boring. And I'm just going to continue on with that same green as I go here. Grabbing a little bit more water. And we're just going to continue on. Now remember, as we're doing all this leaf work, that bloom is starting to really dry. Now, but I bet you can see at the very tippy top there, that top pink petal, that's still pretty wet. The thing I want to make a point of right now um, is that your watercolor paper in these books is supposed to dry slow because the fact that it dries slow gives you time to play, gives you time to work with the page, work with the paint you've already laid down, add more water, let things blend together. It's supposed to do that. So no worries when you see 10 minutes later after you, you've painted an area and you see it continue to be wet. It's all good. You don't have to worry about it. Um, you can go back into a wet area. For example, I could go back into that petal at the top that is quite wet still, as you can see, and add more definition. Um, but the definition won't be as strong if you go into the wet area because you're going to get what? You're going to get bleeding. The, two, the water and the color that you've, you mixed and added into that area, that wet area, are going to blend together. So if you want a lot of strong contrast, um, you definitely want to wait until everything's dry. I'm going to continue with my notching here, guys, just because I really like that definition that I'm getting. It's really um, exciting for me to see this flower kind of take shape. So again, I'm using alizarin crimson, and I know some of you watching this are still wondering, wait, 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 is she going to tell me what that teal color was? And you know what, guys, I'm not right now because I want you to just be okay with choosing a dark green that's already on whatever palette you have. If you don't have a ready-made dark green, mix a little bit of a green, a little bit of a blue, and maybe a little bit of brown or black, and you're going to get a nice dark green to work with. So no worries there, guys. You don't have to worry too much about the colors that you're using. Just use something that's gonna make you happy and really make you excited about continuing on. Okay, I'm adding in definition. I'm using the point and end of the same 
one eighth inch, excuse me, one quarter inch dagger brush. Gosh, I hope I haven't been saying the wrong size throughout the whole thing. Um, again, those thin strokes. Let me show you what I'm doing here. Great time to stop and practice on your side piece of paper here. This is an even watercolor paper, but it's okay. I am barely touching the paper. My pinky is my anchor. My pinky is touching the paper. The rest of my hand is floating over top. That is a personal kind of painter stance that I take with my hand. You do not have to have that same stance with your hand and your pinky that I do. But for me, it works like a charm because it lets me be free with my index finger, my middle finger, and my thumb. But it gives me stability by putting my pinky on the page. So I'm going to continue that technique building up some of the color here. I decided to spread out that color. Now I mixed a little bit of a peach. Uh, for you, a peach might be a little bit of red, a little bit of orange, really watered down. And that could be a great complement to these bold pinks that I'm using. And I'm just adding little, let's call them strips of that color throughout the petals here and there just in places that I think it looks pretty. And then I think it adds some visual interest. I'm gonna mix a little bit more of that peach. Remember, just a little bit of red, a little bit of orange. If you have a pink on your palette, fantastic. Water that down and you're gonna get a nice peach, guys. Just filling it in some more here, just to soften things. I'm adding in those little lines. This is a technique that I'm known for in my wedding stationery business in my personal artwork, I do a lot of textural gestural lines. And what do I mean by gestural lines? I do a lot of um, painting in areas of a flower, for example, with a very thin brush. And I create these small little lines very close to one another that mimic the angle and the shape of the flower or the petal that I'm painting. That's a gestural line. A gestural line just very gracefully follows the shape of something. So I am showing you that here because I often use that technique. I just love the way it looks. It, it gives you dimension. It gives you texture. It gives you interest without being too heavy. There's another example of that. Barely, barely touching the page. I mean barely. Just a whisper of pressure little bit more there right now right down next to the peach versions of that same thin line I added before you'll notice I'm almost outlining at the base of the petal a little bit but I'm not being super super specific about it because I don't want it to necessarily look like an outline here's another example of gestural I really want to make sure that that petal right there looks like it's turning upwards so my little thin lines are going upwards. I feel like I need a little definition here. So again, in with the lizard and crimson, it's not quite as intense. I mixed in a little bit more water. Now I'm going in with clean water to smooth it out. More water. Water also is what I would call the universal smoother, okay? Again, another word, I seriously just made that up off the top of my head. When you are painting an area and you just feel like you don't know what it needs, but you've just put paint down, the area is wet, damp, um, this will work if an area is wet and damp and you just want to kind of make everything kind of blend together a little bit nicer, a little bit better than it already has. Clean your brush, load it up with clean water. Clean water here is important. You don't want to do this with dirty water. And just lay down some water in an area. And I mean a lot of water. It can be a little scary. A lot of water. And that water will go into that area, that petal, whatever it is, and it'll just start to smooth things out. I love that little tip. I am adding orange, guys. I am adding orange because I feel like it. I am also known for... Um, using color in really unexpected, dare I say, <laughs> really strange ways. There's no orange in this peony. Well, actually, what peony am I referring to? I'm painting from my head. So, but you, one wouldn't expect orange on a pink peony, but I just feel like it. I want to add some vibrancy and intensity. So I went in with my orange, again, a juicy brush, 
and I'm doing the same technique as I did before around the edges of these petals. I'm laying down the intense color, cleaning my brush, loading it up with water, laying the water down next to the intense pigment. If it's too much, I'm scooping it up. If I wanna smooth out the area, I'm adding water. Now I'm scooping again. So this is a great time to bring up the push and pull back and forth aspect of watercolor. A lot of times you will lay down color, you will lay down pigment, and it will be too much. You'll wanna lift it up. You'll wanna scoop it up. Remember, lifting or scooping up color is done with a clean, dry brush and not a lot of pressure. So just remember, you can scoop up if it's too much, clean, dry brush, not a lot of pressure, and push and pull. As long as you're not using a lot of pressure as you paint, you can continue to lift and scoop and lift and scoop without affecting the surface of your paper. You just need to use a very light hand. I went back in here into the middle, just using again a, a vibrant, slightly dingy yellow again. Just take a nice medium yellow and mix it with a little bit of the dirty color on your palette. And I'm adding definition to the center of this peony. And I'm thinking about the, the fresh peony I have here in front of me. And I'm thinking about how um, ruffly and dynamic it is. And I'm trying to create that look with these little marks that I am laying down. Now in the book, the, the little marks that make up the center of the flower, you're able to see. So you can simply just fill them in. This is a nice kind of, dare I say, mindless part of the painting because you can just fill it in. If something gets just way out of control and way wet, I do what I just did. I take my paper towel and I blot down straight up and down, I blot it and that pulls up and out a ton of color or water or both. But remember straight up and down, don't go side to side, you will ruin your painting. And by ruin your painting, I mean you will smear the color all over the place. Okay, we're getting serious here. I have mixed a coral. Guys, coral is an amazing color to mix. Again, trying not to get too technical, but just mix together. If you have opera rose or opera, opera pink, mix that with a little bit of orange, donezo. If you don't, mix whatever pink you have with a little red, maybe a little orange, and you've gonna, you're gonna have something really close to what I'm laying down here. I wanted a coral pink to liven things up a bit. I'll show you what I did. There's my orange. Cleaning my brush, grabbing my pink, you can't see. There it is. Orange, opera rose, opera pink, depending on the manufacturer. That's it. And I'm going in and adding detail. Here, I'm going to add that technique with the thin little lines just at the edge of the petal. I want to make that petal look like it's curling downward. It's curling away from the center. I'm adding a little bit of water to soften it ever so slightly touching the paper because I don't want to lose all of the detail I did just lay down. I want to soften just a little bit of it. Going in here, thin lines again. darkening this area of the flower. Now this petal guys is super wet. So I'm kind of realizing that I am working against myself here. I probably shouldn't even be painting in there because it's so wet, but I am. And you know what? I'm not minding too much what I'm seeing. So picked up just a little bit of alizarin because I felt like that area between the two petals needed a little definition. Again, just using the very tip of my one quarter inch dagger. You get a lot of control with the dagger brushes. A lot of control. It's a short handled brush. It's got a nice stocky handle. And so you can really feel like you're in control of your brush versus your brush being in control of you, which I love. I'm not a big fan of super expensive brushes. I have them. I do love some of them. But these dagger brushes, guys, at, at most five bucks a pop are unbeatable. 
I'm going in with more thin lines and my coral color. Next to it with just clean water on the brush to soften. And then just using the pigment that's left over on my brush to fill in some other areas. Again, more water to soften. There's that technique of just laying down tons of water on a painted area so everything kind of blends together. Going into these little buds, this is my coral as well, guys. And I'm just adding in some pigment and then a lot of water over top. It was too much water, so I'm scooping it out. But that's creating a beautiful highlight. A little bit of green here underneath. And what I'm trying to create is the look of a bud that is just about to pop open. Back to the leaves. I'm feeling like all the work that I did on that flower was a little intense, a little detailed. I need to loosen up a bit. So I'm going to head back to the leaves. Another piece of advice I could give you as a, a painter who's just starting out or someone who's only been painting maybe for, you know, six months, eight months, whatever it may be, is to give yourself rest while you're painting. If you're working on a real detailed area for a long time and a long time for you may feel like and be 15 minutes, move on. Work on something that's loose and flowing and juicy. Um, and at the same time, if you've been working on something super detailed for a while, um, or excuse me, super flowy and juicy for a while, woo, it's getting late. Um, go ahead and work on something detailed. So just a little tip for you there. Um, I love thinking about not only how I'm putting color down on paper and what technique I'm using, but I also love thinking about an artist's emotional state while they're painting. You're painting because you want to be happy and you want to be joyful. So if there's things that you can do during your painting session to keep yourself interested and engaged, then by all means do it. So if you're getting bored with a particular area, move on. I'm going into these leaves and adding detail. Yep, there's the orange again. I want a little vibrancy. That leaf is getting dark. It's looking heavy to me. I'm not super happy with it. I'm being really honest with you. So I'm adding a little bit of orange over top of that green that I just laid down because I didn't like it. Now it's all blended together. And the reason I chose orange is because I wanted to up the vibrancy. Now I'm scooping it out. I know you guys think I'm insane. I'm adding some water so everything starts to spread out and soften and lighten up, scooping it back out. Now I'm getting back my lightness in that leaf, but I have a little edge of vibrancy by adding that orange. I know, insane, but it works. <laughs> this is a great point to mention that leaf is very close to being overworked. So I am immediately moving on guys. That leaf is on the verge of being a kind of a disaster. I'll be honest. It's not one yet. So I'm moving on. So that's a great thing to know and learn and to really push yourself to do. If you feel like you are struggling with an area and every brushstroke that you put down, you feel like it makes it worse. Stop, move away, get out of there let it dry, come back. There's no point in continuing to labor over an area that you're frustrated with. All right here, let's see what I want to work on next. Let me come back to, um, as I mix here a little bit, just the, the point about the pressure on your brush, guys. I cannot stress this enough. Um, on student grade watercolor paper, um, the paper is typically thinner and the paper typically isn't quite as stable. So if you continue to scrub, 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 what's going to happen? It's going to pill. Even this paper, if you continue to scrub it and scrub it and scrub it with too much pressure, it will pill. You'll notice a little texture on your page. Now, if that happens, do not panic. It's okay. The one thing that you can do if you start to notice a little bit of pilling on your page, because let's face it, guys, it's going to happen. 
in your journey of painting, it happens to everyone. You get frustrated with an area, you overwork it, it pills a little bit. My best advice to you is this. Take clean water, drop it into the area that's pilled, and walk away. It's just a little bit of a technique that I've learned over the many years I've been painting. It sounds strange, but what happens when you come back is that water has smoothed, smoothed things out for you and it'll be dry and it'll be so much smoother than when you left it. So again, if you find an area is becoming very, very pilled, you want to move away, add some clean water into it, let it dry. And when you come back, you'll rub your hand over it and it'll be so much smoother and you can actually then paint on top of it again, give it some definition and finish it off. Okay guys, continuing along here, I did add some detail into the buds at the top with that coral that I was working with previously. Some green up here, I'm adding a little bit of the teal I worked with before around the center of that bud. And now I wanna add some light, thin lines to give definition to my leaves. Same idea as before with what we did on the petals. You're using the point of your quarter inch dagger brush. Not a lot of paint on the brush here. And you're just going side by side by side with thin lines next to one another. Again, this is a technique. You can practice this angle specifically on a piece of scrap paper before you start. There's no shame in stopping and practicing a little bit. Oh, see, I still want to fuss with that stupid leaf. <laughs> I added a little bit more water in again to smooth things out and I'm, I'm feeling okay with it. I'm adding a little bit more darkness here, but it bled a little. So I'm scooping it up a little more dark definition here as well. I really enjoy painting dark areas before the rules tell me I'm supposed to. I've mentioned before, I'm more about um, having fun and being joyful in my painting than being right or using, or excuse me, going by the rules. So it's not always about the rules. It's not always about being right in watercolor. It's about the joy of it. And one of the rules is that you should paint from light to dark. So you really shouldn't be adding dark areas until you're at the very end of your painting. Well, I never follow that rule. Um, so you will see me in my tutorials and demos adding dark tones very early on in the painting. So I did want to mention that in case you were confused, in case you had been instructed by um, uh, a painter that does paint from light to dark. I'm not saying that's wrong. I'm just saying that that's not usually what I stick with in my own techniques. So I am off the screen a little bit here, guys, but just quickly adding uh, some of that coral to the fuller bud up here with some green. I just thought that would be a nice little addition to this composition that I've been painting with you today. Two different shades of green. One has a little bit more yellow in it. You'll notice in this particular area, I've been using the tip of my brush as well as the side of my brush almost simultaneously. Look at what I just did there. Very little pressure starting out at the top. Then I press down as I reach the, the middle of that little petal or leaf as you will. And then I lift it up as I ended. Um, so if you wanna rewind that and take a look again, you can see how that brush can be used thick and thin all in one stroke. Again, another great thing to practice, creating thick, thin, thick, thin, thick, thin without ever picking up your brush. Try that on a scrap piece of paper. I'm taking the alizarin crimson and just dotting it at the very bottom of where I laid down that wet coral color. So what happens is because it's so wet on wet now, that alizarin crimson, crimson is literally exploding into the coral. Love, love, love that. Smoothing things out. Taking that alizarin crimson around the, the bloom area where it's just popping out. Oh, and here I go. Adding some more of that coral down here for definition. Some more line work for you. 
again, going back to my point of painting in a way that keeps you interested and keeps you happy. Oh my gosh, guys, can I just tell you what? The center of that peony looks like an eye. I just realized that, and that's going to annoy me forever. See, these are the things that happen when you're painting. You realize that something looks like an eye. It's okay. When that area dries, I can go back and fix it. <laughs> oh guys, I hope you've enjoyed the demo today. I've had so much fun. Please leave your comments below. Ask me all sorts of questions. Have a look here at what we've been working on. Questions, please guys. This has been so much fun. I can't wait to paint with you again. Thank you for watching.